Welcome to the Essentials of Motivational Interviewing training presentation. As a result of participating in this webinar, participants will discover key characteristics of motivational interviewing, specific elements and tips for implementing each foundational phase in motivational interviewing, and additional tools for understanding and training motivational interviewing. For OCAT users, motivational interviewing should be understood as a collaborative, person-centered form of communication with clients designed to encourage intrinsic motivation and help clients accomplish specific outcome-focused goals, like employment. There are five key characteristics of motivational interviewing. Motivational interviewing is conversational in that it uses casual inflections and tonalities to gather in-depth information from clients. For example, let's talk a little more about your kids. You have two of them, right? How's school going for them? Motivational interviewing is collaborative by intentionally engaging the client in a partnership that values their experiences and insight. For example, you are the subject matter expert of your life and have the best insight as to what you need or what may be helpful. How can I support you in achieving your goals? Motivational interviewing is purpose-driven by using techniques that deliberately engage the client in fruitful dialogue that helps drive outcomes. For example, I know some of these questions may seem a bit intrusive. We only have a couple more and then we can talk more in detail about your job interests. Motivational interviewing is strengths-based by acknowledging challenges in the context of a holistic view of the client's circumstances, which includes their strengths and skills. For example, you just celebrated 30 days of sobriety. That is a huge accomplishment and a step in the right direction for getting and keeping a job. Motivational interviewing promotes self-efficacy by highlighting clients' strengths, skills, and resilience, which helps boost their optimism and confidence in their ability to achieve goals and overcome challenges. For example, based on everything you've already accomplished, I really believe you can achieve your goals. Motivational interviewing can help workers engage clients throughout the appraisal, ask sensitive and personal questions, and solicit honest answers. Motivational interviewing builds upon basic interviewing, because it includes open-ended questions, involves active listening, recaps and summarizes what the client shares, and emphasizes positive rapport. There are a few guiding principles for motivational interviewing. Express empathy through reflective listening. This should not be confused with agreeing or sharing common past experiences with the client. Empathy means to imagine what they may be going through and genuinely being interested in their well-being. Avoid arguments and direct confrontation. Roll with client resistance rather than opposing it directly. Remember that it is human nature to resist change because change can be stressful and scary. Highlight discrepancies between the client's goals or values and their current behavior. Support self-efficacy and optimism. Empathy can be challenging for all of us. Our personal biases, experiences, and beliefs can hinder empathy. Here are some ways you can strengthen your empathy. Truly listen and demonstrate that you're interested in what the client is saying. Respond and pay careful attention to the emotions conveyed, not just the actual words or details of the conversation. Remember that we are all human and doing the best we can based on our unique circumstances, experience, perspectives, resources, etc. Try to put yourself in their shoes and get your own support system. This job is exhausting. To be truly present for each participant, you must take care of yourself. These are examples of non-empathetic behavior, which can damage rapport and create distance between you and the client. Ordering and directing refers to telling someone what to do in an authoritarian manner. Warning or threatening messages are similar to ordering, but they carry a threat of negative consequences if the client doesn't follow directions. It is important to only offer solutions or advice if you have permission to do so by the client. 
unsolicited advice prevents the client from processing, brainstorming, and problem solving on their own. When persuading with logic, arguing, or lecturing, it sends the client the message that the client has not reasoned through the problem adequately and needs help to do so. It may be more helpful to ask the client if they have considered other possibilities and let them generate their response. Most people do not like being told what they should or ought to do, which are typically phrases used when moralizing or preaching to the client. Any type of judging, criticizing, or blaming implies that something is wrong with the client or what, with what they have said. When a worker withdraws or changes the subject without an explanation, it implies to the client that the worker is disinterested in what the client is sharing. Motivational interviewing is not about confronting the client or engaging in an argument, but it does respond to resistance, which is a normal human reaction to change. The techniques in motivational interviewing help redirect potential conflict by offering new perspectives for the client to consider. Motivational interviewing also helps clients shift their negative perceptions about their abilities through positive affirmations. By reminding clients of their stated goals and dreams, motivational interviewing helps meet resistance by reflecting on bigger purpose for change. Apathy means lack of concern or interest. Motivational interviewing is in fact interested in shedding light on a client's ambivalence to change by highlighting the pros and cons of said change, which may be contributing to the client's mixed feelings or discrepancy in stated goals versus action. Motivational interviewing also assesses and acknowledges the client's readiness for change. Motivational interviewing supports self-efficacy, which is the client's belief in their ability to accomplish their goals. One way motivational interviewing supports this is by encouraging clients to engage in self-discovery throughout the interview. Workers have a powerful role in supporting self-efficacy by acknowledging offered affirmations. Remember that the screening experience can highlight very unpleasant things for a client and tends to focus on potential barriers, which naturally create a negative experience for the client. When possible, regularly provide compliments and positive feedback to the client on what seems to be going well or their accomplishments. Reminding the client of past accomplishments, especially when they appear to be discouraged about their skills, ability to achieve goals, make changes, or address challenges is also helpful in promoting self-efficacy. Motivational interviewing includes four foundational phases. A critical phase of motivational interviewing is engaging the client by establishing an immediate connection built on reciprocal communication. If the client is not interacting with the case manager, but merely answering yes or no questions, the holistic approach to motivational interviewing will be lost. Focusing is when the worker drives the direction of the conversation toward positive outcomes and ultimately employment for the client. If the client's conversation or actions deviate from a positive direction, there are ways in which the case manager can redirect the conversation back to a purpose-driven dialogue. The evoking phase elicits the client's own motivations to promote positive change. It requires questioning and encourages self-discovery. The fourth phase, planning and moving, is the outcome-based phase of motivational interviewing. The client begins to frame their follow-up steps and action items as they go through the appraisal process. For the first phase of motivational interviewing, there are several techniques to engage clients. It is very important that workers express genuine interest in what the client is sharing and provide undivided attention. While we may not understand or agree with the client's perspective, we must demonstrate that we value it. We are each the experts of our life, and it's important to remember that we only share with others what we believe they need to know. Clients are no different. Actively listening means paying careful attention to what the client shares, including their nonverbal behavior. When we think about our to-do list, the next thing we'll ask, or the extent to which we agree or disagree with what is being said, we are not actually engaged in active listening. 
The role of the worker is to seek to understand the client's circumstances in order to appropriately support the client and connect them to appropriate services and resources. Actively listening increases the ability to understand, whereas paraphrasing confirms our understanding and allows the client to clarify when needed. OCAT includes thoughtful questions to help you in this aspect of your job, and we'll cover this more when we discuss other motivational interviewing tips. To assess your ability to fulfill the engaging phase of motivational interviewing, ask yourself, am I listening more than talking? Even if it seems that you've heard it all before and already know the answers and next steps for the client, it's important to allow the client to expound on their answers and create their own solutions. This is a foundational tenet of motivational interviewing. Am I summarizing what I think I understand? It is common to seek to be heard rather than seek to understand. Actively listening and paraphrasing is critical in demonstrating interest, as well as truly understanding what the client is sharing. Am I validating client perspective and empathizing with clients' experiences? By validating the client perspective and empathizing with their experiences, you build rapport and solicit honest dialogue with the client. Remember, the client is comprised of their experiences as, as a whole and not defined by their current circumstances. For the second phase of motivational interviewing, there are several strategies to help focus. The more prepared a worker can be for the client's appointment, the better. It's important to do as much homework prior to the appointment as possible to prevent the client from having to retell their story and make time with the client more efficient. Creating a shared agenda with the client can help you both prioritize what to cover and help redirect conversations when needed. Being prepared and determining an agenda will help you manage time wisely. Additionally, try to find a balance of being flexible with letting the conversation evolve organically and covering all of the agenda items. It's important to refocus clients' outward projections of blaming others or making excuses back to what is within their control and capabilities. Sometimes we must redirect the conversation, especially when it is off topic and possibly irrelevant to understanding the client's circumstances. Do so with caution and care. If you must interrupt or redirect the conversation, first apologize for doing so, and then inform the client that to best serve them, you need to get other information at this time. Before moving on, affirm you're interested in what they are currently sharing and offer to revisit the topic if there is time at the end of the appointment. To assess your ability to fulfill the focusing phase of motivational interviewing, ask yourself, am I asking permission? It is polite to first ask the client if they are ready to proceed with the interview, if they would like some suggestions, if you can share an observation of a discrepancy in their behavior, or if you can provide an alternative perspective. It engages them as a partner in the process and demonstrates that we value their opinion. Am I guiding clients versus directing them? As mentioned before, directing is not empathetic behavior and it isn't partnering with the client. When focusing, it's important to engage the client in a way that guides them into more purpose-driven discussions and outcomes without telling them what to do. Am I refocusing the client back to themselves versus others? The more the client focuses on things outside their realm of control, such as blaming others, the more they miss the opportunity to reflect on what is within their realm of control and the opportunities to play a role in their own success. The third phase of motivational interviewing hones in on evoking client motivation. The definition of evoking is to elicit or draw forth. Motivational interviewing helps draw forth a client's recognition of a perceived problem, their intention to change, and their level of optimism about their ability to change. There are two motivational interviewing tools that can help workers assess and evoke client motivation. Highlighting discrepancies is a good tool to use when clients' actions conflict with their stated values or goals. Stating this helps shed light on a potential issue that the client may not be aware of 
and provides the opportunity for the client to reflect on that discrepancy. Scaling questions help you assess client buy-in, self-efficacy, and follow-through on specific items. Depending on their answers, you can gauge what additional support or further conversations need to occur before action is more likely to happen. Remember that client resistance should not be automatically interpreted as something negative about the client. It is human nature to resist change or have mixed feelings about change, especially when change may be overwhelming or stressful. Change is hard for everyone, and we are biologically wired to perceive all change, whether positive or negative, as threatening. Responding to resistance by ignoring it or by behaving in a non-empathetic manner is unhelpful. Instead, roll with the resistance and refocus the discussion. To assess your ability to fulfill the evoking phase of motivational interviewing, ask yourself, am I acknowledging that ambivalence is normal and change is hard. It's important to validate for clients that having mixed feelings about change is normal and that change is hard for everyone. It's also important to not interpret ambivalence or resistance as a client's character flaw. Otherwise, the potential for conflict and resistance from the client may increase. Am I empathizing with clients expressed barriers to change? Motivational interviewing helps the client discover why and what they may want to change, as well as what may make it harder to change. With so many competing priorities and other stressors, it is helpful to empathize with what the client has identified as potential barriers to change. Am I praising client progress? Am I remembering my client is capable of success? We are all capable of success. Remembering that circumstances do not dictate character and that behaviors can change can help us stay focused on outcomes and the bigger picture. The more we remember the client is capable of success, the more we can promote their self-efficacy. The fourth phase of motivational interviewing is outcome-based and helps transform the client's goals into tangible steps. It may start within OCAT and continue beyond the tool. The client must have input in and take ownership of their goals and action steps. This creates decisional balance between the guidance of the worker and the responsibility of the client. Keep plans focused and targeted with reasonable action items that take into consideration the totality of the client's abilities and circumstances. Both the client and worker should stay flexible and realistic in terms of client abilities, timelines, and life circumstances. Encourage the client to develop well-defined short and long-term goals by reflecting back the positive aspirations garnered from the appraisal. Barriers should be addressed via multiple smaller action steps that are manageable and gently challenge the client without overwhelming them. To assess your ability to fulfill the moving phase of motivational interviewing, ask yourself, am I asking what the client wants to work on? Encourage the client to actualize their relevance in the change process and their responsibility in the growth process. Taking ownership of their goals allows them to drive their own success. Am I guiding the development of reasonable short and long-term goals? To help ensure long-term success, it is important that clients have ownership throughout the process. While we may feel we know the answers, the worker must use a guiding hand to help the client create their own goals and action steps, rather than constantly giving direction. Am I capturing what action steps will be taken? Restating the action steps increases accountability and provides increased opportunities for discussing what additional support the client may need to fulfill the action steps. Am I discussing the follow-up plans? Progress can only be measured if there is some way to track it. Follow-up plans to discuss whether or not action items have been completed help assess progress and provide additional opportunities to learn about the client's circumstances and additional resources or services that may be helpful. This is a great video that highlights many of the techniques shared throughout this training. Here is a list of additional motivational interviewing resources to support your training. To access the resource, click on the hyperlink. 
There are desk aids available that capture many of the strategies and techniques included in this training presentation. The Motivational Interviewing Reminder Card is a quick guide for motivational interviewing. The 11 questions on this card assist in building self-awareness about your attitudes, thoughts, and communication style as you conduct your work. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration has a lot of resources and training related to using motivational interviewing. The Motivational Interviewing Network of Trainers is an international organization committed to promoting high-quality motivational interviewing practice and training. Their website provides resources on motivational interviewing. If you have questions about motivational interviewing, you can post them on the Coaches Corner, a new feature of the OCAT Learning Center located in the Help and Support section. OCAT offers a variety of tools to support trainers. The OCAT Learning Center includes a resource library with training materials and videos to help workers learn the ins and outs of using OCAT. The County Trainer Toolkit includes the one-day County Case Manager training, as well as opportunities to strategize on how to deliver this training. Practice scenarios are available to give learners the opportunities to increase their knowledge and skills using OCAT. For questions regarding OCAT policies, contact OCAT at dss.ca.gov. Please remember to contact the help desk regardless if you are having questions about the mechanics of the tool, the best way to engage clients with the tool, or any other OCAT questions. Thank you for taking this training. We hope it has been valuable and will help you as you integrate motivational interviewing into your work with clients.